everyone around although now it appears that he is very unhappy with the team and for good reason. Bill O'Brien was an absolute disaster during his time in Houston as he traded away DeAndre Hopkins, who was seemingly Deshaun Watson's only good target on the offense, and it's only gotten worse from there, of course leading to Bill O'Brien being fired. Deshaun Watson has every right to be upset with the Houston Tech. First, I'd like to acknowledge that the majority of the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Help us out by subscribing and joining us on our way to 100k because it's coming fast and you don't want to miss your opportunity to enlist in the Jandy Army. Deshaun Watson has been the talk in league circles everywhere, obviously for his unhappiness with the Houston Texans. Many people expect him to make a move like DeAndre Hopkins, who had his own problems with Bill O'Brien, that ultimately led to him being traded away over to the Arizona Cardinals to play with Kyler Murray. Watson is young and has been one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Everyone could use a guy like him on their roster. I'd imagine that even with the draft coming up and the amazing quarterback prospects that will be in it, Deshaun Watson, if he doesn't get traded or if all this drama continues, it's going to be all we hear about literally all offseason. And for good reason. Any team that gets Deshaun Watson goes from either a bad team or a good team to a good team or a contender. That's how good Deshaun Watson is. And I can't even think of another time that we had a player like this that could potentially get traded. You know, we've, we've seen some players go to free agency that were really, really good. Obviously, the Peyton Manning sweepstakes a handful of years ago was absolute lots and sweepstakes. And that is the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Now, there's no true mystery as to why those two are the top options. It's pretty clear. The Texans, they want a top pick at the 2021 NFL Draft. That way, they can possibly take their quarterback for the future. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars shouldn't and won't trade number one in order to just get the top guy in Trevor Lawrence as the first pick. But after Lawrence, it gets a little interesting. Justin Fields is a fantastic prospect and would probably go number one and many other draft years. Unfortunately, he's always been plagued with being stuck behind Lawrence. Ultimately, Justin Fields isn't the same prospect as Trevor Lawrence. That number one pick is super valuable and honestly might be more valuable than Deshaun Watson. But past him, everything gets a little weird and that's why the Jaguars obviously wouldn't give up number one. But it makes sense for the Dolphins and, of course, the Jets. Houston could go after really anybody with those two picks if they can grab one of them. Obviously, without Lawrence, you now have Justin Fields, a guy like Kyle Trask, Zach Wilson, who's up there, and Trey Lance, who I think is going to go super high. Now, the Jets own the number two selection at the draft, which is in a very appealing trade piece to Houston. Additionally, they just hired a new head coach in Robert Sala. Getting Watson would put New York in a good spot to start their new era under Salah. The Jets seem very un sure of Sam Darnold, and they likely want to move on from him in the offseason. Obviously, the Jets have been a complete dumpster fire over the last couple years, and many people didn't even think they'd win a game this past season. They showed a little bit of promise there at the end, winning a couple of games, but ultimately, this team is a complete mess, and they have holes all over the football field. But if you can fill that main role with Deshaun Watson, have a new coach, and start building on it, you're looking pretty good for the future. Next up, the Dolphins have the number three pick in the draft. Of course, if Justin Fields ends up going second, this leaves this pick much less valuable. But I don't think that necessarily matters, because if this trade were to go through, I would expect Tua Tungavailoa to be included in this. There have been inconsistent rumblings that Miami isn't fully sold on Tua. The Dolphins have been very good under Brian Flores, and they see a window opening to be a contender. If you can bring in Deshaun Watson, you're an automatic contender. This guy is one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback, I wouldn't call him so, but he's definitely up there with Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes. If you can bring a guy like this and continue to build around a young core, the Dolphins are going to be extremely good. Now, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler went on Get Up to name off three teams that he believes are going to be serious sleepers in order to grab Watson. One of those is the very team that passed over Watson at the 2017 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears. The Bears have had their fair share of issues with Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles clearly.
clearly wasn't the answer that they were hoping for either. They once did pass on Watson, but don't be surprised if Ryan Pace decides to try to take a shot on trying to get Deshaun Watson. The Bears are a very, very talented team, and their biggest hole is at quarterback. It makes sense. And remember, this is a team that is definitely not going to shy away at trying to go out and trade for somebody. They did that very thing with Khalil Mack, and that worked out great in year one. Unfortunately, the quarterback woes have been a real issue, and hey, even David Montgomery just had a breakout season. It sounds like Allen Robinson's going to be gone, but this is going to be a very, very good team, and if they can get that quarterback in, whatever they have to give up, it'll be worth it. Next, Fowler named off. This is a bit of a surprise to me, the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Panthers don't fully trust Teddy Bridgewater. We know that, and they've made that pretty clear. But Matt Rule is working on building something up in Carolina, and honestly, there's no better start to really getting the ball rolling than bringing in a guy like Deshaun Watson. Carolina is just beginning to start looking at their future. They're going to continue to build through the draft. Honestly, I think this actually makes a lot of sense if the Panthers can actually manage to bring him in. Look at that offense just starting off. You have arguably one of the top players in the entire league in Christian McCaffrey at running back, and past him, your wide receiver core is actually very good. Robbie Anderson just had a breakout season, DJ Moore is an absolute stud, and Curtis Samuel is a fairly reliant wide receiver. Carolina does just make sense. Now, the other sleeper that Fowler named is actually my team, and that is Washington. Personally, I think this does actually make sense. I don't know how realistic this is as a fan, but bringing Watson into Washington makes perfect sense. Ron Rivera is starting to build something up in Washington, just like Matt Rule. The difference is that Washington already has an elite defensive line. This year, they finished as the second best defense in the entire league, literally only behind the Los Angeles Rams. This team Team is somebody that is trying to go after the future right now, and they believe that they have a window open right now to make some serious damage. Build around Chase Young, build around the D-line, continue building around Antonio Gibson at running back, Terry McLaurin on the outside, Logan Thomas at tight end, and try to bring in hopefully a couple other wide receivers, at least one this offseason that's really good and you have to pay out. And you bring in Deshaun Watson, and boom, you likely have a contender. Now finally, past the reports of Fowler, there are plenty of other teams that I think reasonably make perfect sense to take a stab. Now the cap issues are a little heavy here, but I do think the New Orleans Saints logically do make sense if they could figure out the cap. Drew Brees is likely going to retire this offseason. That's been all the rumblings. It sounds like that's what it's going to be. But the Saints are still in win now mode. This is still a fantastic team with a fantastic roster. Very, very good defense. And on offense, you have Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. This is a very, very good football team. They've been close to the Super Bowl for the last three years. I thought they were going to win the Super Bowl for the last three years, and they just haven't been able to get there. Deshaun Watson is a huge upgrade over Drew Brees at this point in his career. It makes sense if they can figure it out. Speaking of trying to replace a great, we have the New England Patriots who dearly, dearly miss Tom Brady after he left in free agency. They've been a mess. They have been a mess since Brady left, and I'm sure Bill Belichick, um, he, he had his time with Cam Newton this year. It, it was quite the experience. I think Bill Belichick would be so fantastic with Deshaun Watson because Deshaun Watson's fantastic. Deshaun Watson, I believe, is much more talented than Tom Brady. He definitely doesn't have the football IQ of Brady, but he'd be so talented and he'd be really fun to watch. Of course, they would need to start putting wide receivers there. Julian Edelman at the slot, the problem is the outside. You've got to have a better outside receiver than just Jacoby Myers and Nikhil Harry, who hasn't been that impressive. Next up, we have the San Francisco 49ers, and this is a bit of an interesting one to me. I think you need to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo if you're the 49ers, and they've made it pretty clear that they don't trust him. They want to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. There's been a lot of rumblings already that they're going to look to a way to get out of him this offseason, and I think that makes perfect sense. This is a good football team, though. George Kittle, you already have. I really like Debo Samuel. If he can stay healthy, that's, of course, the biggest problem, but ultimately, this is a team that made the Super Bowl last year. I mean, there, no one's going to argue that this is a good football team. This is a really, really good football team that was just completely decimated with COVID-19 issues and injuries this season. Replacing another NFL great, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know what the future holds for Ben Roethlisberger. I personally think he's going to come back unlike Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers, I think Ben will return and play one more year. But if I'm Pittsburgh, I'm already worried about the future. And honestly, I'd cut ties with Ben if it means getting Deshaun Watson in. Pittsburgh was really, really, really good this year with Ben Roethlisberger. Imagine how good they could be with Deshaun Watson behind center. And finally, at number 10, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, it's no secret that John Gruden absolutely loves Deshaun Watson. He's been talking about him for 
for years. He loves Watson, and with honestly, with how much power that Gruden has in Las Vegas, especially with that 10 year contract, I wouldn't be surprised if he has complete roster control over everything and he was able to use whatever necessary moves he needed to in order to trade and get Deshaun Watson to Las Vegas. Additionally, they already have a ton more cap room than they did last year because they're finally completely out of those deals of both Amari Cooper and Khalil Mack. If Las Vegas thinks they're close and they're very, very, very good with Josh Jacobs, this is the time to strike. This is the time to go after Deshaun Watson if you can make that move. Ultimately, I think Deshaun Watson will be on a different football team next season. I'd be shocked if he's still in Houston. I mean, it sounds like that's kind of a complete mess right there. So I would expect him to be somewhere else. If I had to take a quick pick, I personally think Miami makes a ton of sense. No, I'm just excited to keep paying attention this offseason and just trying to see where this Deshaun Watson sweepstakes ends. Thanks for watching. If you love Jandy Productions, check out Jandy Hoops where we recently uploaded our first video. Go subscribe and hit that notifications bell and follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more Jandy. We read all of our DMs and love hearing what you have to say.